We've seen the importance of nature parks as habitats for wildlife and sustainability, but how well do you know the plants that make up these forest habitats? Let's take a closer look at the type of vegetation at Rifle Range Nature Park and explore how we manage our forests sustainably. Situated beside the Bukit Timah Nature Reserve, which has some of our remaining primary forests, Rifle Range Nature Park was the site of plantations, kampong settlements and a formal quarry in the early days. After this period, the land was left to regenerate for about 30 years and most of the site grew back into young secondary forest and scrubland. However, these younger forests often lack large, tall trees. Some exotic species have also permeated into the forests and become invasive, outcompeting our native species and disrupting the ecological balance of the ecosystem. One example is the Zanzibar yam, a fast-growing climber that forms large, starchy underground tubers and spreads by producing aerial bubbles. When left unchecked, it can spiral up tall trees, smothering the canopy with its characteristic bat-like leaves. Once established, the forest has little chance of recovery without human intervention. On the other hand, native species provide food and shelter for many flora and fauna. Native species are organisms that occur naturally in a region and have adapted to local conditions without human intervention. So how do we regenerate our forests? Under the Forest Restoration Action Plan, a combination of forest regeneration techniques are applied to assist the secondary forests to evolve into a mature forest landscape over time. One example is the planting of native-dominant primary rainforest species such as Dipterocarpus species and Shoria species that are rare in occurrence or limited by dispersal. These species are adapted to shade conditions and depend on the canopy of the forest to establish themselves. As part of our planting palette, we select native plants from the legume family that produces beans and pots. These include the kampas and patai, which have a symbiotic relationship with nitrogen-fixing bacteria in the soil. The bacteria forms nodules on the plant's roots, fixing nitrogen from the air into the soil. The nitrogen can then be used by the growing plant and other plants growing nearby. In exchange, the bacteria receive food or photosynthesis products from the plants in the form of carbohydrates. These plants help to improve the soil condition and this enables more native species to be naturally dispersed into the regenerating forests. They are also a source of food, attracting animals and insects to assist in seed dispersal and pollination. Assisted natural regeneration was also carried out to remove exotic weeds such as the Zanzibar yam, competing with native tree species in forest regeneration. Regular removal is required to prevent these weeds from spreading and inhibiting the growth of the saplings. Not only that, forest restoration was also carried out with the help of the community through the Invasive Species Management Program and the One Million Trees Movement. Through these programs, the community helps to weed out invasive alien species that pose an ever-increasing threat if left unmanaged. Forest restoration helps the forest return to a healthy state and in turn benefits the whole ecosystem. By enhancing the habitats and ecological connectivity of our nature parks that buffer the nature reserves, this allows for more symbiotic relationships to develop between plants and animals. Following forest restoration efforts at Rifle Range Nature Park, animal records have also shown an increase in biodiversity from 288 species to 300. Also, the succession of secondary rainforests to more mature and diverse rainforests over time helps to strengthen the resilience of our forests to climate change so that everyone can enjoy the benefits of our city in nature. Join us to help transform Singapore into a city in nature as a green, livable and sustainable home for all.